Scott, thank you so much for sitting down with me today. You are a fascinating artist because you don't use a paintbrush, you don't use uh, glass or glue, you use a chainsaw. I use a chainsaw. <laughs> you are a professional wood carver. Oh, I guess so. <laughs> How does one start carving pieces of art out of tree stumps? Started with me all through the chainsaw. So when I was first married, uh, moved into an old farmhouse, started heating with wood. Uh, I kind of fell in love with running a chainsaw. So I was actually looking maybe at uh, getting into tree trimming or logging. And a friend of mine drove a log truck for a company and I invited me to a loggers festival. And when I got there, there were uh, several guys there carving with chainsaws. Fascinated me, decided I was gonna try it when I went home. So after I got home, three days later, I did my first piece. Uh, my wife thought it was kind of neat and just kind of sprouted from there. So. How do you even know where to begin? When you're looking at what is, you know, a solid piece of wood, how do you, first of all, do you have to design something first? In some cases, um, the majority of what I do is, is go on site and do stumps in people's yards. So that process starts with uh, talking with the homeowner, uh, the client and sometimes they have an idea what they want and sometimes they don't. So um, each process in that line is different. Uh, the ones that don't have any idea, you kind of make suggestions. Sometimes you can uh, see something in the wood, uh, so to speak. Uh, sometimes a tree lends itself really well to a certain, certain object or a certain uh, character. Um, other times you go looking to see if what they want will fit in what they have. Um, so that kind of is the process there. I think you are being very humble about your artistic ability because <laughs> it, it takes more than just skill with the chainsaw to be able to make these things, whether it be an animal or whatever, right. look like it's supposed to. So did that come naturally to you? I don't know. I guess finding out that I could do it, I guess, was one aspect. And then as time's gone on, everything just gets more and more refined. The more time you spend with the saw, the more it kind of becomes an extended part of you, I guess. Uh, it's pretty humbling to see stuff that I did when I first started. Uh, a couple years ago, I actually was in the Kendallville area. A customer called me, wanted me to, to do something on a stump. And when I got there, he had a flower bed and he bought a freestanding sculpture that I did uh, of an owl. I took a picture of it uh, because it was I did owl, owls for him that day also, but it was really humbling to see how it started and where it had become. So, so how daunting is it to walk to uh, walk into a, a customer's home generally, look at the stump that's existing, and yep. know that one wrong move? Well, I usually <laughs> don't think about that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it is it, it is one of those things where you know you. If you take too much, there's no going yeah, back, it's right? Always, it's always there. Um, I've, we've had, I've had oh, probably three jobs over the years. I've, I've started and it, the log turned out to be hollow, not really usable, oh. um, something like that. There's been a couple instances where we just transferred that into a freestanding piece and went ahead and, and did the sculpture. There's been a couple times where we found some spots where we just redesigned what we were going to do. Mm. Um, I mean, you always come up with a plan, but each piece kind of becomes its own. So you just try to stay as close to the plan as you can, but it's not always, it's not always exact, but it's similar, so. What is your favorite part of the process? I don't know, really start to finish. I mean, some places you carve, it's just an awesome area. I mean, just spend your days in a really peaceful, cool place. Um, a lot of it's the people um, that you deal with. But I, I don't know that I could really narrow it down into one aspect. Finishing is always like, <sighs> but even then sometimes I've done, I don't know that I've ever been much more than four or five, six days at the very most on a project. Sometimes a large project you pour yourself into and it's almost sullen when you're done mm -hmm. because it's, you just poured so much into it and all of a sudden it's done. So, yeah. so I don't know. The finish is nice, but it, at the same time, sometimes it's almost a withdrawal. Yeah, bittersweet. So yeah. Uh, tell me about the different types of wood and yeah. and the challenges that they present. I read that you that you work a lot with ash. I Is have. I've carved I've carved a lot of ash over the years. 
mainly because the ash borer came through and right. started killing those off here. So there's a period where, oh my gosh, I would say 80% of what I carved was probably ash. That's what was dying in people's yards. So um, ash wasn't bad. Some woods split more than others, tend to crack more as they dry out. Uh, for demonstration pieces, I, we like to work with uh, like a white pine or a cedar or a little bit lighter wood to move around for one thing, but um, it also holds up, makes a pretty nice carving. Uh, but weight is a big thing as far as moving stuff around. But um, I've carved just about all of it. Some are harder than others, take a little more time. Um, some Do you have a preference? Oh, I'd carve probably red cedar and catalpa wood, which is not a very popular wood, but it has a really pretty grain. Um, it's a little bit softer to work with than, than like an oak. Uh, it's hard to find, but I'd, catalpa and red cedar would be my favorite. That's all I'd carve. With. Red cedar <laughs> smells really good while you're carving it. It doesn't <laughs> crack bad, uh, so there's less complaints, I guess. Um, some people think you're going to carve it and it's going to be... I mean, it just stays that way, but woods, there's moisture in wood, so it's not a kiln dry product. So um, sometimes cracks are part of the deal, or, or you fix them if they cause a problem. Have you ever been asked to do a commission that you just had no idea how to go about? I mean, if somebody said, Scott, carve a horse, could you just conjure up what that looks like yeah. and make I've a I've carved horse heads. Um, <laughs> Last year I carved a cow. It was fairly, it was shorter than life size, but it was close to life size um, out of one piece. I did it out of one log. So uh, it was a dairy cow. It was kind of a fun project. It's actually, I think they have a New Haven address on the outside of Fort Wayne. Um, she grew up on a farm milking cows. And that's what she wanted. So she'd been a good customer. She'd probably got three or four or five carvings from me. So. Wow. Do you have a favorite piece that you've done? I have a favorite piece I sold, I guess. Mm. It's, it wasn't really the piece as much as it was the, the whole process. Early on when I was carving, I was at a festival. I did fe more festivals when I started than I do now. Um, had stuff set up. I'd been there for a little while. Well, I think I was maybe under the second day of the festival. I had this young mom come in with a couple of kids. And I mean, I wasn't too far inside the gate and this kid come running up, poured over my stuff. Um, I had prices on it and his mom was trying to get him to move on right. <laughs> and uh, that kid reached in his pocket and pulled out everything he had Aww. and uh, he went home with the carving that day. I mean, I don't know, I probably only had two, three dollars at the most in his pocket but right. somebody said, why'd you sell that kid a carving? I said, he's the only kid that walked up to see how much money he had before he offered, made me an offer, you know. Yeah. I mean, nobody else offered me everything they had in their pocket. <laughs> so I guess that memory, maybe, maybe not the piece, but I don't know. I'll never forget that piece. So yeah. it was cool. It was just a cool day. What do you hope that people um, walk away with when they when they look at your work? Um, well, enjoyment, I guess. You like, like to bring some carvings, bring a smile. Some I don't know. Um, I've done carvings that were memorials for people that I know had a lot of meaning. Those days are really special. Actually, a kid that doesn't live too far from me had me do a carving. His dad was big into hunting, so we did three different animals in there that his dad used to hunt and that's you know that meant a lot you know to be involved in that kind of thing and that's that's happened more than more than once though I mean those days are meaningful so yeah you love what you do what's next do you just want to continue to to see what comes your way or do you have big plans if anybody knows me they know I'm not a planner <laughs> um, as you know trying to schedule this uh, <laughs> it's yeah uh, this has been a couple months coming, I guess. Yeah. Um, I'm a terrible planner. Would like to travel a little bit doing it, maybe go some other states and try to pedal stuff along the way, whatever. Uh, my wife and I like to, we like the mountain areas out east and, and such, so I don't know. Maybe we'll work something like that out at some point. Well, despite uh, the struggle to get this scheduled, <laughs> I'm so glad we did because your work is amazing. I, I'm fascinated by the fact that you do almost all of it with chainsaw, I, it blows my mind. So uh, you are more talented than you give yourself credit for. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much for sitting down with me and I hope that you get to travel and, and show your work all over the place. <laughs> well, thank you very much.
Arts in Focus on PBS Fort Wayne is funded in part by the Our Foundation and the Community Foundation of Greater Fort Wayne.